Perhaps a few words about why the Old Sod Society came into being uh, might be a useful starting point. Um, I think good organizations often grow out of the, the personal wants or needs of those who start them. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's how it was uh, with uh, this organization. Um, anyway, here's a, a little rundown of how I became involved at the start. And I'm going back quite a few years here. Um, before emigrating to Canada in 1970, I was a regular attendee and singer at uh, folk clubs in and around London, England. And I'd already realized that I had uh, found, if you like, my people, uh, a social circle that I was comfortable in, um, in that folk community. Uh, the singing was certainly central to that. Um, and I, well, I was a pretty shy and withdrawn kind of young man, believe it or not, uh, truth be told. And, and singing gave me a voice uh, and, a, and a sort of a presence that I'd never had before. Um, but hanging out with people with mostly similar values and, and philosophies, uh, however young and naive those may have been in the, in the 1960s, um, held an importance that went way beyond music. And uh, I, I, I think I still to this day see folk music and dance as a means to a social end uh, rather than an end in themselves. In 1970, Val and I were both offered jobs at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, and we emigrated to, uh, in August of that year, uh, to Hamilton. Uh, it was a very exciting time, uh, a little bit disorienting. Uh, it was a great escape from the dreary nine to five commuter routine in, in the, the big smoke London. Um, but I missed singing and the music community. I wasn't sure if I'd ever do it again. Um, and I, I was a, a little lost, I think, during those first few months in Hamilton. Anyway, to make a, sh a long, sh long story short, uh, Val and I uh, and a couple of British postgrad students from McMaster saw a small article about the Fiddler's Green Folk Club in Toronto, um, which was run by uh, a couple of Scottish expatriates, Tam Kearney and Jim Strickland, uh, with a format based on the British Folk Club, and uh, it sounded kind of interesting. So uh, we drove to the big city, Toronto, uh, to check it out uh, one fateful Friday evening, I think it was, uh, and we walked through the door, and I guess life kind of changed for good, uh, for me anyway. Fiddler's Green uh, very quickly became Val's and my second home. I think it was anything to get out of Hamilton, actually. Um, and the bunch of reprobates who formed the, uh, the Friends of Fiddler's Green and their kids and grandkids are still family to us 50 years later. Over the next decade or so, uh, Fiddler's Green developed uh, a great deal and nurtured a lot of connections and branches. Uh, there were links with the Toronto Area Bluegrass Committee, uh, the hugely influential, in, influential Mariposa Folk Festival, uh, a massive influence on me, uh, the Toronto Folklore Centre, these were all linked to the club. And, and later on, uh, there was a shape note singing group grew out of the club, uh, the Green Fiddle Morris dancers and, um, uh, and Kaylee dancing. Uh, the, these things all sprang up. Similar branches and connections were happening uh, a little later um, around the Cuckoo's Nest Folk Club in London, Ontario, uh, which was started by my good friend Alistair Brown and a few other London folk. Uh, the traditionally based music and dance folk scare in Ontario, uh, mostly coaxed into life by British and Irish expatriates, um, uh, was in full swing by the end of the, uh, of the decade, the 70s. So rewinding a few years, Val and I moved from Hamilton to Ottawa in 1973, but we maintained a really close connection with the Toronto and London communities. And I often wish for something similar closer to home. So in the late 70s, uh, I met and started playing music um, with uh, Terry Rudden in a, in a band, he, Terry's here tonight, in a band called Hang the Piper. 
And uh, Terry and I uh, organized our first Ottawa concert uh, with Hang the Piper at uh, the Ottawa South Fire Hall Community Centre on Sunnyside in uh, 1979. I guess, um, I, actually I learned that night that uh, it's not a good idea to uh, organize a concert that you're playing in. Not a good <laughs> idea at all. Um, I guess somehow the word got out anyway that there were two uh, impresarios in town who liked uh, British and Irish music. And uh, soon after that, I was contacted right out of the blue by a, a US booking agent called Sharon Davis, who was looking for Canadian venues for her, for her uh, artists, most of whom were British and Irish. And uh, Terry and I, put our heads together and we decided to try putting on some more concerts in town, this time not featuring ourselves. Um, the Battlefield Band, Martin Carthy, Silly Wizard, and the uh, Canadian bagpipe fusion band, Nacabrafe, uh, who are later known as Rare Air, were early events. Uh, I suspect uh, that the Carthy concert may have been the first, um, but uh, I don't think any of us is quite too, you're really too sure about that. Um, it might have been. Incidentally, I've been telling everyone for years that the old Sod Folk Music Society name came about when Martin Carthy's agent required a, a proper organization name from us uh, to put on Martin's Canadian work visa application. However, Terry Rudden tells me, we had a conversation last week about this, he tells me that the name predated that and was actually coined when we needed to appear as a legitimate organization, uh, to a, which we weren't, of course, uh, to, to apply for a liquor license from the LLBO for that first Hang the Piper concert. Um, Terry is probably right. I, my memory fails me, I'm afraid. Uh, in any case, uh, we came up with a term that I'd heard Ottawa Valley Irish folk use for their beloved homeland. And um, the fact that the term old sod was used uh, quite differently in my own homeland uh, kind, of a, kind of appealed to my immature sense of humor, I guess. <laughs> anyway, it stuck, it stuck, so, uh, so there. <laughs> um, the first few concerts were, were actually pretty successful. I think there was definitely a demand for this at the time. And uh, we naively decided to bring the Battlefield Band back for another concert in 1983 uh, at the uh, Great Canadian Theatre Company, uh, then on Gladstone Avenue. Um, by that time, Gord Peeling and Catherine Burns had become involved in our efforts and, uh, and Terry uh, had moved on to greater projects up north. Um, when we lost a significant amount of money, uh, I think it was about 500 bucks, uh, which was a significant amount of money at the time, um, we lost that amount of money at, this, at the second Battlefield Band concert and we decided to, uh, we had to do something, so we decided to try to involve more people uh, in the organization at that point, both to spread the word and perhaps to share the financial load if and when we lost money. Uh, this was in 1983. Um, we had a small mailing list by then and, uh, and we sent out an appeal for help. Um, and a questionnaire uh, addressing people's wishes for the organization uh, and also requesting volunteer help and perhaps co-sponsorship of the concerts as well. Anyway, a number of people responded to the, this questionnaire and we invited uh, all those people uh, to uh, come to a meeting which was held on uh, Catherine and Gord's porch uh, on June the 13th, 1983 and uh, was attended by around a, a, a couple of dozen people. I think the porch must have been pretty crowded. <laughs> we, uh, we talked about our aspirations for the organization. Uh, we designated a, a few uh, vital volunteer roles uh, to perform uh, various tasks uh, and devised a system of sponsorship um, in which most of us jointly or some of us anyway, jointly underwrote the guarantee offered to our artists and theoretically shared in any profits. 
um, though I don't believe anyone actually accepted their profit share after a successful event. Either that or we didn't have any successful events. I'm not sure <laughs> what it was. Um, I think it was all, any money that we made was plowed back into our still, still informal organization. So that's some background of why and, and basically how the Old Sod Society started. Um, and uh, I'll maybe hand over now to uh, Morg, Tim, Ivan and Gord to talk about running concerts and, uh, and house concerts in those uh, ancient days before email and Facebook. Um, I guess we'll be starting with Morg, so over to Morg.